Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm starting a series for people new to 3D printing. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is brought to you by PCBWay, an awesome prototyping service. I want to thank them for their sponsorship for this video. Now to start off with, this series is going to be geared very much to people that are brand new to 3D printing. And for today's tutorial, I'm just going to talk about what to do after you've set up your printer and you're basically ready to go for the first time. One of the key things you do once you have your new printer set up is going from this to this. So let's get from that filament over to our first printed object. And in my case, it's a 3D Banshee. So let's switch over to my printer. And again, we're assuming you've taken your printer out of the box, you've set it up, and now you're ready to load the filament. Now to start off with, I've unwrapped my filament. So I have it out as the spool. Now I'm going to point out I'm using PLA Plus. And I would recommend if you're new to 3D printing to either use PLA or PLA Plus. The difference between the two is PLA Plus tends to be a little bit more, I guess, strong and has some, some better uh, properties for the printer overall. But PLA and PLA Plus in general is the most forgiving of filaments. Now, as you're loading it, you can see I still have the filament through the holes on the spool. And that's important. You don't want to make a whole lot of slack here on the roll. If you have a whole lot of slack, you're more likely to have tangles. And what will basically happen is your filament will stop going through the extruder. So I'm just going to put this up here on the spool holder. Now, in my case, on my printer, I have a filament runout sensor. What this sensor does is it will pause the print if I run out of filament. So we're going to take the filament and I'm going to run this through the filament runout sensor. Now, let's take a quick look at the end of the filament. And something I typically do is I cut the filament at an angle. So the filament right here is at a point. I keep it at a point because that makes it easier to load into the extruder. Now, for our next step, you're either going to use your web interface for your printer or the screen to preheat your nozzle. So let's go ahead and preheat that nozzle. Now I've preheated my nozzle and I just want to show that on this roll of filament here, you'll notice in Celsius, I have the recommended temperatures. So in Celsius, it's 190 to 220. Now in my case, I found that I have really good luck with 220. So I've preheated my nozzle to 220 degrees. So I'm just grabbing the filament. And as I mentioned, I have a point on the tip here. And I'm just going to gently push this little lever and push it through my extruder. Now, if you look at the bottom of the extruder, I'm just pushing the filament out. Now, there are typically controls on your screen or on the web interface to extrude filament. I prefer just to push it down through so that way I could see it's flowing smooth. Now, since the nozzle is hot, you might notice a little bit of filament oozing out, and that's typically okay. Let's head to our next step. I'm gonna try to find a model. There's several great sites out there to find already made 3D models, and those include several I'll show here, and then I'll also mention a few others. Two of the most popular, the ones I use, are both Thingiverse and Printables. And by far, these aren't the only model sites out there. There's also Thangs, Colts 3D, Maker World, and also Creality Cloud. Now, I personally tend to use Thingiverse and Printables the most. Thingiverse by far has the most models, but I've always found the search is not very good. But since it has the most models, I tend to find a lot of stuff there. Printables is newer compared to Thingiverse, and the search is much better. Now, Printables is sponsored by Prusa, which is maker of 
one of the high-end 3D printers. Megaverse is sponsored by Ultimaker, which again is another maker of high-end 3D printers that are particularly used in education environments as well as some production. The first print people typically do, where I would recommend doing, is the 3D Benchy. Now, if we look at Thingiverse, the most popular print of all time is the 3D Benchy. This is a model that's been out there for years and years, and it's suited for basically a torture test of your printer. It's extremely popular. In fact, if you look, there's numerous examples of Benchies out there. There's contests of who can print the fastest Benchy. Now, I like it because it's so well documented. Now, if I look at the description here, they have all sorts of different links and information and videos. But also, with the Benchy, it comes with its own website. And the 3D Benchy website has information on recommended settings, as well as various measurements you can make using the Benchy to help tune your printer. So let's start with grabbing that Benchy. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here on Thingiverse, go to Files, and I'm just looking for 3dbenchy.stl. An STL file is a common 3D model format. And sometimes you'll see STL, and the other one you'll sometimes see that's popular as well is the 3MF file format. But personally, I'm just going to use the STL and something to help you at least on Thingiverse. You can look at the number of downloads each model has. I'm just going to go over here and click download and that'll download that to my downloads folder. And let's go over and take a look at that in my slicer. I have two choices to get that Benchy into my slicer. I can go to file and import and then import the file or I can just open up in my file browser this and I could just grab the file and drag and drop it. And in my slicer, I'm using Orca Slicer and I have an extensive list of videos for setting up and using Orca Slicer and I highly recommend it. Now, if you're just starting, in a lot of cases, your various print manufacturers like Corality, Bamboo and Elegoo all have their own slicers. And usually the slicers are either derived from Bamboo Studio, Prusa Slicer, or Cure. I'm using, as I mentioned, Orca Slicer, which is based off Bamboo Studio. And developers have created all sorts of great features that I really like and use often. And like I said, take a look at Orca Slicer, see what you think. Now, I should mention I much prefer either using a generic slicer as opposed to one of the slicers that comes with my printers. I like to have one slicer and use it for every printer I have, regardless of the brand. So I've loaded my 3D Benchy and let's take a look at the settings. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, an awesome PCB prototyping service. One of their great features is their instant quote, where you can set the specifications of your PCB board. You can upload a Gerber file and then receive an instant quote. Once you place your order, you then can take a look at their transparency window to take a look at the production status. Under your account, you click production status. With this production transparency, you'll be able to see what the status of your order is and what's actually going on. So again, I want to thank PCBWay for their sponsorship. As we can see here, the recommended settings for the Benchy is a 0.2 millimeter layer height and an infill of 10%. Now, I don't worry about the speeds. I use the default speeds of my printer. And that to me is the ideal way to do this. Don't change your speeds, but do look at your layer height and your infill pattern. The layer height here of 0.2 is about halfway in between and would be like a standard quality where I think a maximum quality for a 0.4 nozzle would be about a 0.1 would be the, the best quality and the worst quality would be somewhere around 0.3. 
So your layer height's always going to be smaller than your nozzle diameter, but it usually floats between 0.1 and 0.3, depending on the quality you need. Since this is a test, we're going to use their actual recommendations of 0.2. So let's look at Orca Spicer. And in my case, I have my first layer height. It is a little bit bigger, and I can just leave that as is. But my overall layer height is 0.2. I'm going to go over to strength and you'll notice that my infill is set to 10%. That's great. And lastly, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to other in Orca Spicer and on my brim type, I'm going to select outer brim. Now, what is an outer brim? Let's do it without the brim. So let me do no brim first. I'm going to slice this. And what the slice do slicer does is break the model up into different layers. So if I look through here, here's the layers. Now, you look at this, and that's a fairly small area that's on the print bed, the very bottom of that benchy. And that can cause, particularly since it's bigger on top, smaller at the base, that can cause adhesion problems. So one way for me to solve that adhesion problem is I just go over here to brim type and I'm going to turn on an outer brim. So again, got to slice again. And you'll notice now when I look at the bottom, there's a brim of filament around the base of the model. And that basically gives it more area to adhere to the bed. So I actually like that personally. And that's extremely important to me. So I do that typically on a banshee just to hold it down. So I'm using an outer brim. Like I said, you can look at that and sort of see that there's more holding the model to the bed now. Switch over and let's go to none real quick or no brim. Slice it again. And you'll see that the cross section holding it to the bed is much smaller. So in the case of a benchy, I do that outer brim. And let's slice it. Now you have two ways of getting this to your printer. In my case, I have my printer set up so it's networked to the printer, but I can also export this G code to a file on my machine, put it on a USB and carry it over to the printer. Now, since I'm already connected, I'm just going to send the print directly to the printer. But before I do that, let's switch back over to the printer and just take a quick look. Now, one of the big problems that people new to 3D printing have is getting their model to stick to the bed. But one of the things I do is I use 99% isopropyl alcohol. I squirt the bed after every print and I just give it a quick cleaning. And I'm using a microfiber rag so it doesn't leave any residue. And now my, my print bed is clean and the print should actually adhere better. Now I've sent the print to the printer. And you'll notice one of the first things it does is there's some automation here. I have a probe which does automatic bed leveling. And the first thing that happens is it homes the printer. So it's checking to make sure everything's working appropriately. And now it's basically going to preheat the printer and get ready to start printing. So let me pause and we'll come back in a minute as it starts and I'll show you what to look for in that initial print. And one of the key processes here as my bed heats up is my printer is probing the bread bed so that the printer can basically correct for any imperfections in the bed. Now I have my printer and most likely your printer will do the same doing what's called the purge. And this purge is it gets rid of filament or draws a shape off to the side of the model and gets rid of any filament that's hanging down. And you can sort of see that it's knocked off this filament. So that's good. Now, one of the things I want to do is if I can run my finger over the base of the model. That's a little difficult. But the filament on the bed should feel like I have fishing lines stretched across the bed and it's held down tightly. 
if I run my finger across the model and the filament is moving, the nozzle needs to be moved closer to the bed. So I want to just take a look and watch this first layer. Typically, if it's going to fail, your printer will fail on this first layer. So I want to watch the first layer. And so far, everything looks good. I like the way it's looking. And let me see if I can change the angle a little bit. So hopefully you can see a little bit better that first layer as it's being laid down. And I actually think it's already completed, and now it's starting on the second layer. And it typically, it looks good. I see the brim, and then it's filling in the very bottom of the boat now. So let's let this print, and this should take about 30 minutes or so. And then we'll come back and take a look at the finished model. Now, as you can see, the bench is completed. Now, most likely your printer came with a scraper. First inclination most people have is to scrape that bad boy off. I would not. I don't like the scraper, I barely use it. The scraper, you're more likely to damage your bill plate. Now, in my case, I'm using what's called a PEI sheet, and this bed comes up. And you notice, as soon as I pick it up, the model just pops right off. So that's good. And I could just peel off this excess here. So that is all I need to do. I didn't have to use that scraper. I just wouldn't use a scraper. If you're using a glass bed, the way the glass bed works is if you wait a couple minutes, let the model cool, it'll get cool enough and you can real quickly, it should release the model. Now, looking at this bench, you'll notice there's stringing and some other issues, maybe right up in here. But based on those issues, I can now print, I can now tune my printer and try to make a better print. So you can see this also has the brim, brim quickly peels off. So now I have just the bed sheet. Now, next steps, I would recommend looking at calibrating your printer. And I'll link to a video above that talks about printer calibration. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you like my work, feel free to subscribe and let me know if there's any content you're interested in. Thanks. Have a good day.